So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a one-way repeated measures ANOVA on version 29 of SPSS. We'll also take a look at the assumptions of this test and how to test those and how to report the results of those. And we'll take a look at how to report the results of the ANOVA itself. So we're going to use a one-way repeated measures analysis of variance or ANOVA when we have a categorical within participants or within subjects independent variable and when we have a continuous dependent variable. So for this example, let's imagine that we're looking at how stressed people feel at three different times in the day. So we've got stress scores here for how people feel in the morning, and we have stress scores here for how they feel in the afternoon, and stress scores here for how they feel in the evening. So we can imagine that this is like a one to 10 scale with higher scores representing higher levels of stress. So let's take a look at how we can enter these data into SPSS. So we'll go to the bottom of the screen and we'll click on variable view and then we'll enter a name for each one of the levels of the independent variable. So something I should have mentioned is that when we're using this test, you need to have at least three levels within the independent variable. Otherwise, you could use a paired samples t-test instead if you just have two. So you need to have at least three or more levels. So I'm going to enter the name of one of those levels into this top left cell. So I'm in the name column. So I'm going to type morning there. Then I'm going to put afternoon in the cell below that. And then I'm going to put evening in the cell below that. Next, I'm going to use this measures column to specify that each of these is a scale variable. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to go to the bottom of the screen and click data view. And we can see that morning, afternoon, and evening have appeared at the top of these three columns. So then we can just copy and paste the data from the Excel file. So it's just going to select that data, then press Command C or Control C. And then I'll select the top left cell here and then press Command V or uh, Control V to paste those data in. So one of the assumptions of the within participants one way ANOVA is that the data are normally distributed within each one of the levels of the independent variable. So one way to check this is to go to Analyze, then down to Descriptive Statistics, then across to Explore. We can then transfer all of these across to the dependent list, and then click on Plots. And then I will untick Stem and Leaf, but we'll tick Normality Plots with Tests, then we'll go to Continue, and then to OK. So if we go down to this Test of Normality table, we can see it's divided into two parts. So we've actually got one test over here and we've got a different test over here and we normally use the shapiro wilk test if we have fewer than 50 participants um, so in this case we just have 19 participants so we're going to use the shapiro wilk test instead of this test over here and the main thing we're interested in is whether these values are below or above 0 0.05 so we can see that in this case all of these values in the sig column are above 0 0.05 indicating that the data are normally distributed in each one of these uh, conditions. If you observe that your data are not distributed normally, you might consider doing a non-parametric version of the within participants ANOVA, such as the Friedman test. So we're going to go to up to analyze and then down to general linear model, then across to repeated measures. And then we're just going to give a name to our variable. So we're going to call this something like time. And then we're going to specify how many levels that independent variable has. So in this case, we have morning, afternoon, and evening. So we have three. So I'll enter three there, then click add, and then I'll go to define. And then it's just going to transfer all of these across to this within subjects variables box. And we can probably select some other things while we're here. So let's go to options, the script of statistics, estimates of effect size, and then continue. We could also ask for plots at this point. So I'm going to transfer this independent variable to the horizontal axis. Then we'll go to add. And then you can choose between a line chart or a bar chart. I'm going to go for a bar chart. And I'm going to ask for error bars. And the default option is to have error bars that represent 95% confidence intervals. So I'm going to keep that. And then go to continue. I'll then go to EM means. And we can use this to ask for post hoc tests. So the, the ANOVA will just tell us whether there's a significant effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. 
but we can ask for postdoc tests to tell us, to provide us with more specific insights. So is there a difference between morning and afternoon, between morning and evening, and between afternoon and evening in this case. So I'm going to transfer my independent variable over the over to the display means for box. Um, then I'm going to tick this compare means box here. And then you can choose one of these. So I'm going to choose the, the bomb variety test. And then I'll go to continue and then to OK. So if we take a look at these descriptive statistics, we can see that the score for stress is lowest in the morning, it's about three. The score for stress in the afternoon is about five. And the score for stress in the evening is also about five. And then if we go down to this Morchley's test of sericity table, that's going to tell us which row within this table we should look at. So this contains the, the results of the ANOVA, but there are various different options to look at. So the assumption of sericity has been met if the value in the SIG column in this Morchley's test of sericity table is above 0 0.05. So we can see in this case that this value is below 0 0.05, indicating that that assumption has been violated. If the assumption has been met, you can consult the sphericity assumed rows within this test sub within subject's effects table. However, if the assumption has been violated, such as in the case with this data, you need to consult one of these other three rows within the test sub within subject's effects table. Um, so I'm going to consult the greenhouse geyser row because this is this is the most commonly used correction when you observe a violation of the assumption of sericity. So we can see if we look in this greenhouse guys uh, row, we can see that there's a significant effect of time of day on stress scores because this value here is a below 0 0.05. Additionally, if we scroll down a bit, we can find this pairwise comparisons table, which is going to provide us with some more specific insights into these results. So we can, if you remember, we uh, allocated the number one to the morning, the number two to the afternoon, and the number three to the evening. So if we look at this bit here, so this row is going to compare the morning and the afternoon. And if we go across to the SIG column, we can see that this value is below 0 0.05. So there's a significant difference between the morning and the afternoon. Similarly, if we look at one and three, this value is below 0 0.05. So again, there's a significant difference between the morning and the evening. And then finally, if we compare two and three, so that's the afternoon and the evening, again, we have a value below 0 0.05, indicating a significant difference between those two conditions as well. So let's just take a look at how we can report these results. So we often just start off with a sentence that indicates what the test was and what the variables were. So we've said a one-way repeated measures analysis of variance was conducted to examine the effect of time of day, morning, afternoon, or evening, on stress scores. Next, rather than getting to the results of the ANOVA itself, I've reported the results of the assumption checks that we performed. So the Shapiro-Wilk tests indicated that the data were normally distributed in the morning, afternoon, and evening. So let's just take a quick look at where those statistics come from. So we're going to scroll back towards the top of this SPSS output file. And we'll find this test of normality table. So let's just cross-reference that with what we've written in this Word file. So we have morning, afternoon, and evening. Let's look at the morning row, and we'll go to the Shapiro-Wilk part of the table. We can see that the W statistic, 0.926, that's what appears here. So we've said W equals 0.93. So I've just rounded that value to two decimal places. We've got a 19 in parentheses here. That's just this DF value here, so degrees of freedom. And we have a SIG value of 0.143, and that's what I've reported here. So P equals 0.143. And then I've just done the same thing for the afternoon and for the evening. So the normality assumption was met. However, Morchley's test indicated that the assumption of sericity was violated. And so I've inserted some statistics here. So let's just take a quick look at where those come from. So I'm looking at this Morchley's test of sericity table, and we've got this chi squared equals 11.39. So we can see that that comes from here. We've got this two here, that's the degrees of freedom, that's in this part of the table. 
and we have a p-value p equals 0 0.003 and that's what we have here in the sig column. Um, so then I've said because that this sphericity assumption was violated I've said therefore a greenhouse sky set correction was applied and now we get on to reporting the actual results of the ANOVA itself. So we've said there was a significant effect of time of day on stress scores. And then I've inserted some statistics here. So let's take a look at where those come from. So I'm looking at the tests of within subjects effects table. And the first value I've reported, so F equals 31.68. Remember, I'm consulting this greenhouse guys, greenhouse guys a row because the sphericity assumption was violated. And the F value here is 31.68. Uh, we have these degrees of freedom values here, so 1.34, that comes from this DF column and the greenhouse guys, greenhouse guys uh, row, 1.34. And the other one is um, also in this DF column, but it comes from the greenhouse guys uh, row within this error section of the table. So we have 24.19, and that's what we have here. So those, those two degrees of freedom values. Next, we have the significance value. So I'm back up here again, the greenhouse skies are row, going across to the SIG column. P-value is less than 0 0.001, that's what we have here. And we have this effect size, this is a partial, partial eta squared value, 0.64, same row. This is 0.638, so I've just rounded that to two decimal places. So I've set a post-hoc analysis with Bonferroni corrections, indicated that stress scores were significantly higher in the evening compared to the morning and afternoon. And so I've just inserted um, means and standard deviations every time that I've referred to a level of the independent variable. And so those means and standard deviations come from this descriptive statistics table. So for example, the first one here is the evening mean equals 5.89. And that's what we have here. And the standard deviation, 1.10. And that's what we have here. Um, and then every time I've referred to a comparison I've included a p-value so that comes down that comes from this pairwise comparisons table and we're just focusing really on the sig column uh, so for example the first comparison I make is between the evening and the morning so remember one is morning three is evening and the value here is less than 001 which is why I've written P equals less than 001 there. So that's essentially how you report the results. If you'd like to also include a figure, um, you could modify this figure that was generated as part of the process of running the ANOVA. So I've just double clicked on it and that opens the chart editor. We can see it has these big, fat, bright blue bars at the moment. So we probably want to choose a color a bit more dull than that. Normally you'd have something on the gray scale if you're using APA formatting. So I'm going to go to this properties menu and then I'll go across to bar options. Actually first we'll go to fill and border and we'll choose like a, a gray to change the color of those bars. And then if we go to bar options we can decrease the width of the bars by moving this thing over to the left. So let's see what that looks like. And some things we probably just want to remove from the figure. So these titles, you probably just want to have that in your Word document instead of as a fixed part of the figure. So if you just select it and then press backspace, that should remove it. Same thing here, there's a note about confidence intervals, that sort of thing you can probably just include within your Word file instead. So again, I'll click backspace to remove that. So anything you want to change, you can click it and then click it again. And then you can change what it says. So here it says estimated marginal, me marginal means. So I would replace that with something that's more specific to your dependent variable. So let's put stress there instead. And anything you want to change the size or font style of, you can just click on and that will open this properties window. And then you can choose a different font. So maybe you want to choose a font that corresponds to the one that you're using in your reports. And you probably want to make sure that these uh, access labels are big enough to be read easily. So let's increase the size of those a bit. So now you can see that these uh, numbers are much easier to read. And of course you can just edit anything by clicking on it once and then 
If you double click, you'll get the properties window open. And any changes that you make within this chart editor are saved automatically. So you can just press this red button whenever you're ready. And that will close that. And you can see that these changes have been saved within the output. So that's basically it for the within participants one way and over on SPSS. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will try to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.